Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong. Welcome to the back office. If you recall a while ago, I was playing with an ozone generator. Now the time has come to put it in a box. Now I was racking my brains to figure out how to do this and it would be nice to have a fan. It'd be nice to have an on off switch and obviously it's mains driven. So it'd be nice to hook it up to the mains. So one problem with doing that is, you know, there's a lot of bits going on there and one of my long time, uh, well, long time I've been following him, he's been following me a little while, is Guru Larry. And if you haven't seen Guru Larry's channel, please head over there right away because he does some amazing videos of very good production quality about video games and retro games and all sorts of facts. His fact hunt is fantastic. And he suggested I use one of these, which is, of course, the PC power supply. Um, because it comes in a nice metal box and it already has a bunch of stuff on it. So you've got the fans, you've got the power and you've got uh, a switch normally. This one's already been harvested for its switch. However, I do have this one which I'm using to harvest cables from. So that still has the power of the switch and look a lovely huge fan and a nice big box so I can mount some bits in it. There are some issues with this. So you've got your unit here. That's great, it's got all those bits and pieces. So in that box you have to one, mount this huge transformer. So if you look at the depth of the unit, that's gonna be a little bit tight with that fan, but it can get in there, that will fit. It, I can just about shoehorn that. And then you've got your plate. Now this plate normally connects to this connector block which solders onto those HT leads. And that whole thing is clearly too long. And not only is it too long, if you just look here, You've got your solder ends here, which are going to short out the edge of this case if you put it on the edge there. Sorry about the colors, black on black on black. It's quite hard to see, but we'll, we'll battle through it. So my idea is I'm gonna take this off. I'm going to probably end up chopping these down and then I'm going to resin some of these blocks in. And you've seen these blocks. These blocks are the blocks that you get uh, when you're doing DIY furniture. They actually are just screw terminal blocks really. And I'm going to just use the same resin that we used in the kit for repairing furniture. If you recall, look at my le leather repair video. It came with a whole bunch of resins. I'm not gonna buy any new epoxy resin. I'm just gonna retask it for this. So let's start opening this box and clear out all the old stuff. So we just need to dig into this. How do you head in? How is this constructed? I think. So getting your way in seems to be the hard part. <sighs> These screws are really hard work, so I'm glad I managed to get them out without stripping them. Okay, finally got into it. Let's rip the gubbins out and let's start positioning things to see how we're gonna get it all back into the case. Now that the case is off, we're just gonna use our trusty soldering iron, desolder the mains wires that are coming in here, yeah, from the power point and switch at the back because we kinda of wanna reuse that, that's neat. So we're gonna desolder them here and we'll probably use some heat shrink to connect that to the mains cables here on the actual inverter, okay? So desoldered now, this is gonna go onto the shelf of usefulness because I'm gonna keep these cables, but the, uh, I'll leave the PCB connected on the end just to keep them all in one place. Great, our inverter fits nicely. And it looks like there's just, I'm gonna bend that back down. There's just enough room for the fan. So we still have to fit in our ozone plate and that's gonna be tricky. I'm putting the pieces together. We have this fan, we need to power it. It's a 12 volt fan, you can see it needs 12 volts at 0 0.16 amps, okay. So we did a teardown a while ago and I've got this teardown, um, teared down picture frame, which is a 12 volt one amp power supply. So this should be more than enough. So I'm gonna just hook that up. I've stripped the ends already. I'm gonna plug that into the mains. 
there we go. That's going to do the trick nicely, but I'd like to get this into the case somehow. So I'm going to have to maybe split this and then see if I can use the PCB. Just going to see if I can take these terminals off without damaging the PCB too much. I can see inside here there's a tag. I might be, be soldered onto these, you see. Got my wires here. You can see in the mains plug there's some terminals just in there, which is great. So what I'm going to do, just to probably out of focus for you, I'm just going to tin the ends of my wires. There we go, nice and quick. I'm going to get in there and try to tin these terminals because, yep, that tin nicely. And come on, come on. There we go, two tin terminals. So what I'm going to do is just solder these straight in. So that way I can keep the actual main componentry of the AC adapter inside its plastic case so it's insulated and relatively safe. And I'm just going to push these in slightly and then pot them. Because I'm using resin to hold everything together I'll just mix up some extra resin and pop it down there. And then just mount this whole unit inside the case. So you might ask yourself when you're doing this, you know, is it a bit uh, dodgy, a bit jury rigged? Yes, maybe, but be very careful. You know you're dealing with mains. Make sure everything's secure in the cases. It's kind of a system integrations product, product project. So rather than just um, you're, you know, rather than working from first principles and trying to put in nice PCBs and things in the box, it's quite legitimate to use things like this plastic enclosure in its entirety. There's no real negatives with, down, you know, with using this. There's a fan in the box, it shouldn't overheat. It's designed to have um, not produce too much heat. You're only using a small amount of current from this. So if you can just mount all this and put that on a nice resin, pot these so it's electrically safe, there's no, you'll get no issues with it whatsoever. Just soldering these on, applying the heat shrink. Been about an hour messing around with it now. I think I've got all the pieces ready to go and ready to just resin them into the case. I'll just show you some of the detail before I do. We've got the brown construction blocks here. I've actually just cut down with a hacksaw down the middle of them and I'm using these as standoffs. You want to make sure when you mount it in the case though that you can see this tracking. You don't want the tracking to touch this. Make sure there's a nice gap. So I put, I'm going to mount two in the case, resin these down, and then I'm going to screw these or resin these on top. The reason is this actually leaves a gap underneath. You can see my finger here because we've got these cables and HT leads. So it might be nice to have that gap because I can root these underneath out of the way. I'm going to also put some resin in here, pop these in, and then I'm going to glue this or actually just, I'm going to use the same resin for everything. Just resin that down. I'm going to resin this down, resin it all together, pop it on and then hopefully it should all work. For the resining itself, remember our quick 20 vinyl kit, lots of little pots of resin. I'm going to just start using this instead of any uh, other arrow that I have lying around because it's here and it's handy. glue's dry now. 
I've got all the pieces into the case, all the resin is set hard and I'm going to start putting the lid back on. I've used a few cable ties, you can see that dotted around um, just to keep the wires out of the way. I don't really want them getting anywhere near this element plate so I've left quite a big gap around it. We're just going to root the cables around the edges here. This HT lead will just about fit here and we'll just make sure we don't snag any of these loose wires as we put the lid on. Scarily, look, it all fits and there's no nothing rattling. <clears throat> I've plugged up this hole as well because we didn't want any fingers to go in there, so I use a piece of plastic. It's looking rather nice. I think we can afford to put the last screws in. There we go, all connected. Look at that. So it's rather nice. You can see the fan in there just through the grill. Just see the hint of that AC adapter block there. Power, switch. So the air is going to be sucking in through this, I believe, and then blowing out the top, although I'll check that now. I didn't really check the direction of the fan, but it's not too important. You can see through there under the fan, that's the HT generator, and I've blocked this hole up so you can't put your fingers in. Nice and neat. So let's plug it in and see what happens. So I've got my kettle lead here plugged into the wall, switch off, there we go, I'll turn it on at the mains, it's on and now I'm going to gingerly push the switch here, there we go. Bit strange how the fan takes a few moments to come on, I'm not sure if that's a function of the fan itself or a power supply, doesn't matter. It. Um, there's no crazy electrics going on into the case, it's not electrified. The case actually still has the ground uh, loop from the plug actually attached to the metalwork. It's glowing a pleasant um, purple, as you can see there. I'm going to just dim the lights to show that ozone is being generated. It looks a little bit scary. So there's your switch operation. Let's see if we can work out which way the fan is blowing. So we know it's going around this direction and the shape of the blade is blowing. So it's actually sucking in the top here and it's blowing it out the front. So you just got to make sure you don't block this really or block either end really. They're not going to get the effect. So the ozone is going to be blowing out towards here. So that's, that's kind of less, um, less good. Uh, I probably would have preferred it to be sucking in the back and blowing out because maybe you'd attach this to a case like um, a big box. If I, for example, if I wanted a cardboard, um, a big plastic box that I wanted to put shoes in, yeah, I'd want to attach, cut a hole in the side of the box and put the, this unit in it and then have it sucking in air from outside and filling the box with ozone. However, you know, in most applications, maybe you just want it circulating. You know, you don't want it to actually keep bringing in fresh air and then ozonifying that and then bring it around. So you'll probably just have the whole unit inside a box um, and then just have it. It's basically re-ozoning the same air. So, you know, six or one, half a dozen of the other. Fantastic. So there you go. I hope this has been useful to you. I really like the idea of using power supplies as project boxes. Thanks, Gory Larry. It is a mains project. Please be very careful. Don't uh, electrocute yourself. Make sure all your wiring is up to scratch, all your RCDs and fuses, things in your house. I'm going to uh, have a go at playing with this, maybe put it in a box, see if I can de-stink some shoes. As ever, thank you for watching. Update time! Just a quick update. Yeah, I've been running this a while. It's uh, got a little warm in operation around this edge here because this edge is where the transformer is, but uh, not too hot. Um, it's really weird. It doesn't seem as ozone-y. I don't know if forced, forcing the air gives the reaction less time to occur inside the plate, so it might actually reduce its ozoniness, or perhaps it's just the fan dispersing it that little bit quicker. 
so it doesn't have that concentration when you sort of sniff it and get that blast in your face. But I just thought I'd show you the last finishing touch. Bit of dirt there. Feet! Look at these feet. You can buy these in CPC and places like that. They're quite expensive for what they are. However, don't they make a grand job of finishing off this project? One just fell off. Let's plop that right there. They're quite huge and rubbery. Look at that. Look how thick they are. Rubbery. But that's quite good. It's going to let it stand off things so that gives a bit of airflow underneath, lets that heat dissipate through the case. So, as I said earlier, I hope you have fun maybe making your own one of these and just be careful. Try to do a bit of research about the effects on organic life and the human body of ozone gas. You don't want to mess around a bit too much. It could be dangerous, but you know, it isn't everything these days. Again, as ever, thanks for watching and happy hacking. Bye bye.